I build a lot of portable antennas for ham radio, HF wire antennas, and a lot of verticals because I'm always operating usually on the beach or by the sea or somewhere near salt water, which kind of calls for a vertical antenna. I'm going to give you, in my opinion, the five best vertical wire antennas for somewhat for portable. Maybe you can make them permanent, but my what I think are the five best wire vertical antennas for HF ham radio. Stick around. Vertical wire antennas. I use these mostly when I'm portable and uh, for the HF. And we're going to kind of put a little preface in this too. These antennas that I'm talking about, my top five are basically for 40 to 10 meters uh, meter bands uh, HF because that's kind of where I operate as a uh, as a ham radio operator. You can build these, uh, you know, as a permanent uh, antenna at your home QTH as well. But I'm um, going to lay that out. That's what I'm thinking. Also. Few of these antennas are going to require uh, a ground plane underneath them. Uh, typically, with me, I operate by the beach a lot. With that said, I usually run one counterpoise wire. I don't worry about the length as long as I got it long enough to kind of kiss the edge of the water, and it, that works for me. Um, I know a lot of people aren't going to be by the water like me, and you still these antennas really will work anywhere. At that point, uh, four to five counterpoise wires on the ground. I try to put at least a uh, one wavelength of wire underneath it. So let's just say for a 20 meter band antenna i try to put 20 meters of counterpoise wires on it so four or five meter long counterpoise wires is great the length really isn't important if they're on the ground yeah there's the debate about raised radials and all that that's not where i'm at and i'll be honest with you there is not an antenna on this top five list of mine that has raised radial so we'll start off with that my number five uh rate uh, antenna a uh, vertical wire antenna is the quarter wave vertical the quarter wave ground plane antenna what a great antenna. And this was the one you really, if you've never really built a lot of antennas, I really highly suggest building this one first. Just calculate calculate uh, the you know what a quarter wavelength, the length itself is. That's your driven element to, to build with wire. Underneath it, as I just talked about, counterpoise wires. That's it. I built this antenna on land. I have built this, uh, I mean, by in parks. I built this antenna a lot uh, at the ocean or by... Um, or by seawall, water, wherever I'm at. And it's really a great antenna. It's, like I said, it's resonant. You don't need a tune, tune or anything. Because at the feed point, you should have about 50 ohms for whatever you cut it for, for that frequency and there around it, that, that band. I usually try to cut for the middle of a, of a say, if I'm going to build it for the 20 meter band, a dead center of the voice where I'm operating is at is where I cut these for. And, and I build these. I highly recommend this be your first antenna if you're new, a new ham or, or new to building portable wire antennas. Now, you can build these using a one-to-one -one ballon. I, I've done that. Or very simple and cheap. You can get a banana clip. That's what this is. Um, people ask this question all the time, but the driven element, the upper wire, goes to the red or positive because that goes down through the center of the of the uh, coax that's what's feeding the driven element your counterpoise wires go here on the on the uh on the negative side this side and, and out on the ground because that's going to the jacketed side of the coax so that's number five a quarter wave vertical and you can build these i've built them for 20 uh 15 and 10 you can build them for 12 any, any band you want to i do have a pole big enough to build one for the 40 meter band and by 10 meter uh the expander pole will do that i need to get out and do that i've never built one for 40 but um but for 20 and it, it's a that's a great dx antenna for the daytime uh, evening afternoons uh, it's a great antenna for that so that's number five the quarter wave vertical antenna Number four. Number four is going to be more than one antenna. We're going to call this a random wire vertical. With the random wire vertical, I'm also going to throw in the Rivikoff antenna and the 17.5 with that as well. What I'm calling the random wire antenna is basically a multi-band antenna uh, for vertical that's um, kind of made to, so you can operate it on, uh, on different bands. They do require a tuner of some sort or, or an, an ATU. So a lot of times I get the question nine to one or four to one. I'll go through that. Typically I've built these and one of my favorites is the 29 foot vertical 
um, antenna. And with that, that's uh, 8.84 meters, the 29 foot. With that, that's a nine to one on un uh, feed point impedance usually needs a nine to point nine to one on that. That's a great antenna as well on 40 meter band. I've used that on 40 and 20. I mean, you can use it on any band. It'll, it'll tune with that nine to one with a good tuner. I use my Zygu G90, which will tune anything, but um, that's a very popular antenna and a popular length because with the the, the uh, 29 foot or the 8.84 meter antenna, you can use a, a 10 meter pole like the DX Commander pole. I've built this antenna on a lot of beaches and it's just a, it's a DX machine. You can also build a, in that same with the nine to one as well. Two other antennas that I've built is the uh, 30 35.5 foot um, random wire vertical. That's 10.8 meters. You, you need something a little bit more, maybe the 12 meter uh, uh, a pole to do that, you know, take the wire to the pole and, 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 and use that. And there's, I've also, I've built the 41 foot, that's 12.5 meters, the 41 foot uh, vertical, another nine to one vertical random wire antenna. Um, I actually spliced a couple different poles together and it was like blowing in the wind, but I got 41 feet of uh, wire in the air and wow, what a great, that one really was a great performer, especially on 40. I even used that on a 60 meter band. So with that same uh, family of random wires, the two other antennas are the, the, the Ribicoff, which is a 25 foot, or that one is a 7.6 meter long antenna, or what I call the 17.5, which is a 5.33 meter long wire antenna. These both, uh, both of these use a four to one on un because somewhere in the neighborhood of um, 200 ohm uh, feed point on the bands, like uh, especially like the Ribicoff I've used on 40 with some success, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 with the Ribicoff was also good. 10 was like amazing with the Ribicoff antenna. The um, 17.5 just as well. 17.5 from, from really from 20 to 10. And it was, it's almost, it's real close to being a 5 eighths wave uh, antenna for the 10 meter band. So really good antennas there. Another, you know, more of what we call the random wire. So I'm going to call the number four uh, uh, my number four uh, vertical wire antennas, the random wire antennas are basically, we'll say, non-resonant verticals that you can um, you can bring in and tune with a tuner and either a nine to one or a four to one on end. We'll call that number four. Number three, number three is kind of close to one of those. Number three is the five eighths wave vertical. Five eighths wave seems to be the point of um, of of the best takeoff for dx and if you got a vertical that's you're what you're trying you're aiming for a low takeoff angle and the the takeoff angle of a 5 8 wave antenna is is almost perfect for uh, for working dx and for skip and that type of thing i've only built this antenna for the 10 meter band and using a uh, 5 8 wave length long wire for the uh, 10 meter band it's um i, I use a four to one on and didn't need a tuner it tuned it had pretty good swr this kind of varies depending on what, um, you know, what band you want to build one for, how much, you know, how big of a pole and how high of a wire you can get it up there. If you could get one for 15 or, or maybe the 20 meter band, that seems to be a little bit of a matching issue with that. I guess you could use a four to one in an ATU, but if you want one and not use a tuner, there's, there's different forms of, uh, impedance matching there at the feed point. But I tell you for a 10 meter band, the five eighths wave, uh, length wire on a pole and you could use a simple like a smaller like a, I use my uh, DX commander seven millimeter pole those poles uh, are, are great and, and work well in that length and I'll tell you what it's an amazing DX with a 5 8 wave vertical which I will say is my, my number three favorite wire vertical antenna number two Number two is a vertical dipole. I love vertical dipoles. I've built vertical dipoles for the 15 meter band. I've built them for the 12 meter band. I've built them for the 10 meter band. I don't quite have enough uh, uh, stick or pole to get up there. I do, I just haven't done it to build a vertical dipole for the 20 meter band. But I know when I get a, a good uh, vertical dipole up in the air uh, for 10, I just, it, with low power, I made some great contacts with a um with a vertical dipole antenna and it that's another antenna where you don't you don't need a ground plane with that antenna you just um you know get that up on a stick if you don't have a lot of room around you let's just say what i like to do i pull up in my jeep uh and put the pole on, on a uh, holder that, that i put like a flagpole holder i drive over with my tire and put it up in the air and, uh, and, and run it as well. Usually a one-to-one -one ballon at the feed point there for the vertical dipole. 
And man, it's just amazing. It really is. Uh, people ask me too on that. It doesn't really matter, but usually with the, uh, if I'm using the ballon, I put the, uh, the upper wire on the vertical dipole on the positive side. It'll work either way, um, but that's how I do it. And I've had some great, great success with, uh, especially on 10 meters with a vertical dipole. My number two favorite antenna. My number one favorite antenna for vertical wire antennas. Nothing beats this to me. The best antennas I've ever built is a half wave vertical for i'd make them for the 10 meter bands and i've also built half wave verticals for 15 and for 10. the 20 meter band half wave vertical oh my gosh i've had some of the best dx i've ever had i will get out on the beach in the mornings early in the mornings with a half wave vertical with that thing in the air 49 to 1 on un or I have another one that has a matching box that I got from M1 ECC, but the halfway vertical in the air. And what I do with mine, I only put, I use a small counterpoise wire. Um, there's some theory there. I don't wanna to go too deep into that, but with mine, I, I take a small counterpoise wire that is 5% of a wavelength. So for the 20 meter band, it's about a meter long, uh, a one little small counterpoise wire and get that thing in the air. Man, like I said, in the morning times when I get on the beach with that from the East coast of the United States, I can work the South Pacific, um, New Zealand, Australia, VK, ZL on um, like, like nothing. That's just a wonderful antenna and one of my favorites. This antenna can also be built uh, for I, that I've had a lot of fun with on, on it for a 10 meter. And you can get it way up on the top of the pole. So you can get some height with that as well. I built this thing with a 10 meter for the 10 meter band. Now, feed point impedance is a little bit different between the halfway vertical for the 10 meter band and one for the uh, 20 meter band. With the 10 meter band, the feed point impedance is, is a little greater. And I use a 64 to one with that. Once again, kind of like I was talking about with the uh, vertical dipole, I stick that, I, I can park right in, the, in my car, Jeep, or what have you, put that up, and get it up high, and, and, and put it on the, on the pole right next to it, and sit inside, and, um, and, you know, in a small area, small space, you got a great DX antenna. And a halfway vertical, I tell you what, for both the 20-meter band and the 10-meter band, it's just an awesome antenna. I tell you, this antenna, I actually, we have a, in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, um, giant sand dunes. I mean, they're almost like small mountains of sand. And I've gone, I've climbed, trekked up to the top, kind of like beach soda summits on the air, but at uh, Jockey's Ridge uh, in, in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And I've built this all the way up on the top of Jockey's Ridge. And you, you're, I'm telling you what, I was like, just, I could not believe the DX I could work with that antenna up there. It is my number one wire vertical antenna. It is the halfway vertical for 20 meters and the halfway vertical for 10. And like I said, I built it for 15, worked great for that as well. But um, there you go. There are my top five antennas. Yours may be different than mine. Your operating situation may be different than mine. Who knows? But um, tell me, what what, are, what is your top five? Give List them and give them in the comments. I'm curious. Um, Remember, we're just talking about simple vertical antennas. I know somebody's going to go beams and you know, delta loops, whatever. I'm, no, I'm talking about single wire vertical antennas. What are your top top five antennas? Let me know. If you're into that, and if you're into building antennas and operating ham radio and just having fun on the HF bands, please like and subscribe. That's what I like to do, and um, and I have a lot of fun doing it and documenting it and um, and putting it out there. And I, I'm learning, and I try to pass on what I'm learning to others as well with it. Anyway, until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, until next time, stay salty, my friends. 73.